You're approaching the outer limit. Our infinite struggle to intersect the axis that is science and the elusive curve that is the universe. This isn't science as we know it. Rather, science as we shall know it. I've plotted the course for our exploration, but there are no innocent bystanders here. Near the limit, each of us must be a scientist. The human brain. Everybody has one. We walk around using them every day. While colloquialisms throughout history have led their suggestions as to how much of our brain we actually use, John Eccles and popular science have led to the common assumption that humans use 10% of their brain. If your bicycle operated like that, you wouldn't ride it. Honest neuroscience suggests that the power of the brain is infinite, and the switch to make it all happen is the amygdala. Footnote, neilslade.com, the amazing brain adventure by Neil Slade. The human brain is really three brains in one. It is a reptile brain, mammal brain, and primate brain. The brain stem is your reptile brain, controlling basic life functions and instinctual behavior. The limbic system makes your mammal brain, controlling inherent emotional and social behaviors. The cortex and glial cells comprise your primate brain, which computes more advanced thinking. The front third, your frontal lobes, can even be thought of as your human brain. This is the most advanced part of your brain, responsible for creativity, logic, intuition, new problem-solving, synthesis of ideas, imagination, concepts of time, and planning. The amygdala acts as the switch between your reptile brain, which habitually gets us by in the world, and your human brain, where the infinite possibility lies. And here's where we've reached the limit of technology. Modern imaging systems can only provide a map of the somewheres that some things are happening. We need to find out what the brain is able to do. Reach into our scientist's toolkit. Utilize observation. Says Neil Slade, clicking your amygdala forward is like wiggling your finger, only it happens inside your brain instead of at the end of your arm. Do this. Wiggle your right index finger. Easy, isn't it? Okay, wiggle your left big toe. Easy too. Now, locate your amygdala. You click it forward using your frontal lobes. Image that your amygdala is like a click-toggle switch. Now click the switch forward towards your forehead. There, you did it. I clicked my amygdala while on assignment in Minnesota. Here are the images I saw. I imaged the amygdala as a switch and clicked it on. Inexplicable. Unnerving. And so we've come to the predicament where the doctrine of Western medicine leaves no room for these kinds of observations. Recently, the Dalai Lama has been working with a small group of researchers to study how Buddhist contemplation affects the mood and promotes a sense of peace and well-being. While preparing for the Dalai Lama's upcoming lecture tour, Dr. Nancy Hayes, a neurobiologist at the Robert Wood Johnson Medical School, had this to say. As the public face of neuroscience, we have a responsibility to at least see that research is replicated before it is promoted and highlighted. If we don't do that, we may as well be the Flat Earth Society. Footnote, the New York Times, October 19, 2005. Scientist Bridal at Lecture Plan for Dalai Lama by Benedict Carey. How the brain works is the most complex puzzle in all of human history. I believe that only a bridge between Western and Eastern science can traverse this mystery. Until next time, make rigorous observations and be prepared to cite your sources. I'm Ryan Corals. I'll see you again near the limit.